All right, I am back with John Ellis. Uh, and John, you've got a really awesome product that got released a, a few months ago. It's a DF-16, is a MERV-16 filter bank. Uh, and this is really changing how we're gonna be able to control particulate matter in houses. I'm gonna let you talk to us a little bit about it, and I've got a couple questions for you at the end. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming, Tim. Thanks. Always a pleasure to yeah, see you. Yep, so yep. this is the DF-16. Okay. Uh, and it's Dust Free 16, and mm -hmm. the 16 stands for MERV 16. Right. And so V-Bank configuration isn't anything new. We've been doing right. it in the industry for a yep. long time. But what's different is this is a residential application. Okay. And so uh, if we talk about performance data, this is up to three tons. And then we have another model that does four and five tons. Okay. This comes in at a 0.13 static drop. Wait a minute, 0.13 static on MERV 16. Yes, sir. Wow, so that's like pretty much what your one inch filters are doing at right. best at MERV 8 or yep. MERV 6. And then our, wow. our five ton unit, which is over at the True Tech Tools, yep. Yep. because they have an exclusive, that's where you can buy this. Okay. Our five ton published data is coming in at a 0.18. Now really we're impressive. conservative on published data because you have to be. Yeah. Uh, we have them installed in the field and contractors are bringing the five ton in at a 0.14. Wow. On a five ton, 2000 CFM, 492 feet per minute. So, of course, uh, their NCI contractors are actually here, so they're doing the, the good stuff. They're doing it right, right? Yep. Paying yep. attention to airflow right. and everything. Here's what's unique about this product this filter is rated at a MERV 16. Yep. It's got 70 square feet of filter media in this two and a half inch filter. 70, so, if we were to take this thing apart and stretch out those pleats, we'd, we'd stretch it out to 70 feet. Yes. Wow. And there's three of them. That's now, amazing. most filter manufacturers get their filters rated, right? They get yes. a MERV rating, yep. and this is MERV 16. That wasn't good enough for us. This whole system is rated MERV 16. Most manufacturers don't do that. They'll, man they'll, they'll rate the filter, they uh, stick it into a cabinet, the right. cabinet's loosey-goosey, yep. and you're not at a MERV 16. Right, so or the we, velocity because the cabinet's choking it down. And, and, and bypass. Yeah. Yeah, right. so that, so that the, was important. There's no bypass Total performance here. of this, of theirs, would be less than MERV 16. Yes. But yours as an assembly is a MERV 16 yes, assembly. Yes, so we okay. wanted to make sure we were rock solid. So the filter MERV 16, the system is a MERV 16. Wow. Yeah, and that was important for us. If we're going to go to market, we wanted to be the best in class. Got to, yeah. yeah. So um, people always ask about filter life, which is important. Yeah. Right now, our published data is saying under decent conditions. Yep. Now, now hear me, if you live on a farm, you got eight dogs, three right. cats, 10 goats, yep. and 18 Shearing chickens, in the house. and All the right. doors are open and grandpa's plowing the yeah. field, yeah. you will not get three years out of this filter. Right, right. We're rating this at a three year usage. And that's amazing, but I guess that makes sense because you're taking 70 feet times one, two, three. So you got 210 linear feet to spread that three years worth of dust Surface around. area, baby. It's yeah. all about the surface area. It's all about area. the surface area. And, and so where we're at too, when we talk about filtration and we talk about performance data and static resistance and airflow, we need to talk about particulate removal. Exactly. We are at 98% removal, 0 0.3 microns. Wow. Yeah. But we're also doing substantial work in our PM 2.5 ultra pines. Uh -huh. So we are doing work in that. Our, our loading curve, as this loads, even now, now, this is a premium product, and you have clients that need this level of filtration. They probably got a pretty darn clean house right. already. Right. We're thinking that we could get four years out of this filter. Under the right this circumstances. This filter, yeah. fully loaded, at the end of four years, you, you're loading yep. her. We are going to be where most filters start. Wow. Brand new. Is, are you talking about uh, Merv or pressure drop? Pressure drop. Okay, okay. And, and, and thank you for bringing that point up. The Merv never changes. Yeah, and, and so how do you achieve that? Well, I'm teaching a class tomorrow and I'll give a couple tidbits. I'm gonna go over the five filtration methods. Okay. One of the ways that we achieve that Merv 16 is an electrostatic attraction. The electrostatic attraction has to do with the microfiber technology, what right. they're made out of, and we're using glue bead technology. As this unit, as these filters front load, 
most other filters will start to lose that attraction. Mm -hmm. And even our competitor goes from a MERV 16 to a MERV 14 in about four months. We because hold the dust MERV, is preventing we, that attraction from yes. taking place. Okay. And so we have front loading of the filter, right? Okay. Because of all the service and the way the pleats are made in the microfiber technology, as that, as that uh, dust starts to permeate, we hold the electrostatic. Oh, okay. Therefore, we will hold the MERS 16 rating for the full three for years. For the full duration, wow. Yeah. And so remind me again, when do we get, we get into HEPA at MERV 16 or above MERV 16? It's typically above MERV 16. Okay. Um, but we're right depending there. Depending on at, who you're at, ask. You know, we're, we're right there. Because I've heard both ways, but we're pretty much at or just below HEPA. Yes. With this with this model right and, here. And part of the HEPA realm or category mm -hmm. is also being able to utilize those filtration methods, the five, right? Yeah. Most filter manufacturers only use two. Some of the better ones use three. We use all five. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll be at your class tomorrow awesome. and I'm going to be interested in learning about all five of them. Here's what I'm going to tell you. We built this for ease of application. This is the size of up to three ton furnace chassis. Okay, that's right? why I thought it looks like a 21 inch frame here and the depth of a furnace. Now you told me something earlier that even if we can't fit this where the, a typical filter rack could normally go, we could put this remotely and duct to it and duct out of it, right? Absolutely. So in a typical horizontal, if you have room, because space is a commodity, yeah, right, as you know, right. uh, you would transition off the furnace yep. to this. Yep. And these come with a, with a flange kit, ready to, ready to okay. accept ducting. Yep. And then you could actually put a plenum on this side and right. do multiple returns. You could put a squared around. Yep. You can hang, it comes with eye bolts. And so you can hang this thing with uh, all I thread. I see that. And uh, they, they just attach to where the, 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 the okay. screws are here. Okay. And then you can hang this thing remotely. So you'd come square it around off your furnace. Right. Square it around here, square it around there. Hang it remotely, optimum airflow. Yep. And then bring it back to and the then, unit. And bring it back to the unit. Yeah. So it's still a retrofit. There's still retrofit abilities to put in here. A lot of people, they see this giant box and like, I can only put this in a new house where I kind of have control of where other things go. But yeah. you can... There's still a lot of options for retrofit. Here. So far, the, all the ones that have been, install, been installed have been on an existing well, system. Well, there you retrofit. go. And I love, I just want to zoom in on some of the quality here. We've got gaskets right here that prevent filter bypass. Mm -hmm. This is a heavy, this is not a flimsy thing right here. Uh, well insulated. I'm going to tell you, it, this is built well. And yes. so it is well worth it. Um, I'm going to look for an opportunity to try to sell one of these things. I, I'd and love to I'm see gonna, it, and, and I know you'll give us performance data. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I will. Uh, I will give a lot of data on it. Um, I'm looking for ways to be able to stream static pressure live uh, and remotely. So yeah, that 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 would be a good way to do that. Um, and then it looks like we've got like a. Is this a transition kit right here? Yeah, yeah. This is an SST. Okay. Okay, and so we have several SKUs, A to A, A to B, A to C. Yep, yep. And what this was designed for is as we're heading into the SEER 2 and EER yep. and being able to do AHRI matchups on furnace and coils, uh -huh. we're finding that the coils are uh, oversized. Yes. A and, and so I've seen, how many have you seen contractors smack them up smack and put a little L bracket there. Yeah. and they're taking away 30% of the capacity right. off of it. Oh yeah. So this, this transition is designed for, for SEER 2, maximum airflow, wow. easy transition, furnace coil. It's right. got an access door so you can clean the I coil. I love it. And you can uh, be able to inspect the, the heat, heat exchanger exchanger and the coil and the coil and it's got actually, right this is there. where you mount a UV light so you can properly okay. protect gotcha. the coil. Okay, because that's, that's where that is. Where that belongs. I saw a hole and I was like, oh, that's where you check your static pressure. But well, you, you could can. drill into that. Well, absolutely, yeah. you can do a static gotcha. pressure port. Awesome. Well, John, thank you for the demonstration. I look forward to your training tomorrow. And as always, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming.